Hello everybody, welcome back to the table. This is not the normal filming area. I've moved out into the bigger area that I've got where um, I can set the ships out and the play mats so I can do a, a proper two-player game. And this is uh, just a little kind of update what I've done to the ships that came in the Sales of Glory Basic Starter Kit. Now, the mat I'm playing on is the basic set that comes from the Black Seas game. I haven't bought anything specifically for um, uh, Sales of Glory. What I want to do though is get one of those nice neoprene Sales of Glory mats because the paper one here is okay, but you know you can see all the fold lines and everything. And I, I want to get something maybe that looks a little bit nicer. But the ships on it look really good, I think. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, they look pretty good. I'm actually very pleased with the way these came out. I've done just a couple little changes, which I'll go over. I mean, nothing drastic, but that's what I wanted to do, is kind of show you what I'm doing to mod these things. So it looks great on the table. These are some really nice looking miniatures once you get them kind of modded up a little bit. <clears throat> and I'll show you what I did. Now I'm not going to do any tutorials unless somebody really, really wants a tutorial on how I rigged these up and uh, got them painted. But it's really not that difficult, but I'll show you what I did here. When, you're, when you have the ships against the blue mat, it's really hard to see the rigging. So I've got some a piece of white paper I'll pull out, but I'll show you the rigging that I did. And I think that just adds a little extra to them. I mean, these are, I was, I'm super pleased with the way that these look on the table. And you don't have to do much work to get them, you know, ready for extended action. When I got this set, I told my wife I wanted these because I spend a lot of time assembling and painting and all kinds of stuff. And. I wanted a game where I could just grab the ships, stick them on a base, and go. And this meets all that criteria. The ships come pre-painted, they come with a base. And what's cool is I might not have showed you this in the unboxing, but the bases, maybe I did, but the bases come blank. So you could easily put data in there for other stuff that you want in addition to the information that you want for you know, sales of glory. So, already based everything. So I think this is a fantastic thing. Now, I don't want it to seem like I don't want to promote sales of glory. I'm not affiliated with them, but I think they have an amazing product where if all you did was buy ships, that would make them happy too. Buy their ships, and I think they're worth getting if you want to get into, you know, miniature gaming. The thing is, obviously, there's a hobby aspect where you can buy ships that you need to assemble and paint and do everything. But at the same time, why can't you do both? Now, I actually don't know the scale that these ships are in. I don't think I saw that in the rule book, and I'd have to hop on the internet. But I don't have any ships that are in a 1-2000 or a, a, a 1200 scale or something like that to uh, compare so I don't know exactly where these would fit in against, say, like GHQ models or another manufacturer. So this might be kind of its own scale. So if you were going to commit to buying these ships, you might have to buy these. So I'm not, not sure uh, where this fits in overall with other ships. But I, I don't know. I think just by themselves, they look really good. And you just start to throw some rigging on them, and boom, you've got ships. But that's what I want to show you today is... How to take those basic ships, do just a couple of things, and then boom, you've got even more spectacular. Yeah, so that's why I was saying to my wife, was like, I just want ships where I just pull them out of the box, put them on the base, and play. And then she saw them the other day, she's like, wait, why are you painting and rigging? I thought you wanted ships you could just take out of the box and play. I was like, yeah, but that is true. This game accomplishes that, but with just a little bit of extra time, you know, sometimes at night I got nothing better to do except to paint and watch TV. So that's what I did. I'm going to adjust the camera here. So this one, this is one of the, the French that, this is the, the French third rate that comes in the box. And 
This wasn't the first one I did, but basically to kind of get the kind of a canvassy look to the sails, because they do, when you get them in the box, I mean, they are bright white. And sometimes there's a little details on the sails that you totally miss. You just can't see them. So what I did was I took some Games Workshop Argax Earth, Earth Argax, Argax Earth, Earth Shade. So they, they have a, a shade product that you can buy a little, yeah, I guess it's shading, but it's Argax Earth Shade, I think is what it's called. And just try to lightly put a, a light coat on there. And that kind of turns that, you know, pure white to kind of this off, off brown a little bit. And it pools up in areas, kind of gives some shading and whatnot. Gives it a nice dirty weathered kind of look, I think. I like it better than black. I've seen on some ships where they take the white sails and they use a, a black shading. But... I think that this brown is a little more authentic to kind of what I imagine these old, dirty, canvas, weather-beaten sails would look like. And it sits into these corners and crevices and things, so it really brings out all the detail that they've put onto the sails. So I thought that's a good, 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 good look to it. Then the rigging, this is the part where... I had to uh, compromise a little bit on. So the rigging I did almost exactly like I would do on the Black Sea ship. So I'm glad I took some experience there and I applied it here. Wow. And the only thing that I, I well, one, these front sails, they come attached in such a way that you kind of have to fudge these front rig lines they don't quite match up exactly how the sails are attached. So, you know, that's a little off. But from a distance on the table, it doesn't look bad. And I can't get the side rigging. So the rigging that I have is like, you know, to keep it, you know, the stabilizing front and back. I don't have the port and starboard kind of stabilizing rigging on there because on the larger models, there's little holes that are in the hole of the ship that you can run your thread through. And that's not on here at all. And I have little hands, little hand drill, but it's not little enough. I would totally destroy this if I tried to put side rigging with the thread. I'll show you an attempt that I made. And I don't think it turned out very good. So I'll have to kind of think on how I would want to accomplish that. But the basic rigging actually isn't too bad. On the larger ships, and I don't know if they will all be this way, but one of the first riggings that you do is you go from this the bottom of the foremast up to this middle section of the main mast, and it wraps around, and then it goes back out here to the uh, bowsprit, bowsprit, bowsprit mast, I guess, and kind of wraps around the front. Now, on this one, at least the two that came here, these large ones, there's actually two holes, two itty bitty holes that you might be able to see there where the thread will go through the hole and wrap closely around the mast and you can fit it underneath this little part that stands out so you get a nice tight fit. And so you can pretty much replicate a lot of the rigging that you do from Black Seas and just kind of wrap around the base there, it wraps up around there. Then you can wrap, goes from the middle up here. And, you know, just running the thread, trying to match the Black Seas rigging, it, it's not perfect, but, you know, you, you can get close and you can get all your little stabilizing rigging in there. And it doesn't look bad. It takes me, <clears throat> well, I'm watching TV when I do this, so, you know, you got little distractions. But I would say the rigging probably takes about an hour. <laughs> Yeah, I could probably do it quicker. I've, I've gotten a little experience on here now, but it still takes a little bit of time. But the ships are set up pretty good that all the rigging can fit through these gaps in the sails. So even though the sails are already attached with just some tweezers and a little bit of swear words, you can kind of get the rigging to fit through. So that's the French one. And then here's the British one going the other direction. 
but same thing. The, the ships are all pretty much rigged exactly the same way. And you've got the rigging on the front sails. Oh, this one matched up a little bit better. And you got the rigging here. So again, I don't have the left and right stabilizing rigs on there. So I, I wish I could figure out, you know, how to do that. And I'll, again, I'll show you my attempt at it, and I didn't like it at all. But um, even if I didn't have any other rigging on the ships, I think that does add a little extra dimension. And again, you got the Argax Earth Shade on there. Now, the thing that I did with this ship first that was wrong was I had rigged it just to experiment. And then I was like, hey, you know what? Why don't I put some shade on these sails? And so you can see there where I didn't quite get the shade up underneath the, the rigging properly. So if you're going to do that, do your shading first of all the little sails, then do the rigging. So shading, then rigging. Then here's one of the frigates. And the frigates were actually a little more challenging because they're smaller, but they were a little more challenging to get some rigging on there. But again, still doable. Um, you, you, gotta, you have to make some exceptions for the way the things are set up. Again, because if the sails are already attached, so you have to kind of try and route things underneath the sails and you know it it doesn't make for the best rigging experience but in the end again once you have it on the table they look pretty good and i i think if you compare these next to ships that don't have any rigging this really kind of helps it stands out well it's a good i think a good way to customize your ships i think so i think it looks pretty good and like I said, you spend about an hour per ship, do it over a few nights, boom, you got them done. And if you buy your ships, you know, one at a time, um, I don't think anybody, if you, if you spend some time with it, I think anybody can rig these. Someone made in the comments that um, it looked difficult, but not really. I don't, I don't think it was any more difficult than the Black Sea ships. It's just um, surprisingly it took more thread. It's very odd, but I used a lot more thread trying to, to get these just right than I did on the Black Sea ships. But anyway, there's, there's some rigging there. Now, this is the problem I had. I should have brought a little pin to point. What I, what I thought I would do, and this was my first attempt at putting the extra rigging on the, on the sides there. And you can tell that it's very loose. They're not tight. Because what I did was I would put a dab of uh, super glue on this bottom spot. And again, because there's no holes to attach the rigging to, I put a dab of super glue down here on, on this bottom area. And I took tweezers and I tried to, you know, put one end of the glue up top on the mast, let that dry. Then I tried to pull the string tight and get it touched down to some glue down below. But it didn't work out. It didn't work out. So there's some, some rigging on there, but again, it's really loose. It doesn't look super good. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to do the whole ship like that because I don't think I like the way it turned out. So until I think of something better, I, my friend, what he does, and he does these with like some GHQ models, is he takes broom, the, the, off the, the broom, what do you even call that? The bristles off of a broom, and he cuts them to length and kind of lays them down. But for some reason, I don't, when you compare them, if you've got part of your ship threaded and then part of the ship with broom bristles, they do look super different from each other. So like if you did the entire ship in broom bristles, then it wouldn't look out of place. But when you try to put some broom bristles next to threaded areas, there's a clear difference and it doesn't look good. So it, it might look better than the, the loose thread that I have here. I'm going to have to pull those off. But yeah, I might just leave these ships like this. Put my Argax Earth Shade on the sails and then just do the basic threading in the middle and call them good. And that might be all I need for these. But that's what I wanted to do was just to show you that uh, I did make the attempt to put some rigging in them. It's possible. It is a little tricky. You do use a lot more thread because 
since you can't quite get in here the same way you would on ships that don't have the sails already attached, I had to use like a lot of extra thread to loop around and make my tie my knots like I would have to tie the knots out here and then pull everything together towards the mast that I did end up using more thread to accomplish the look. But yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Worth the time? Would it be something that you'd want to give a try? I don't know. I, I, at least one person said that they, uh, they thought it was a little challenging. But I, I would challenge you. Go back and give it a shot. I think you can do it. And I think when you do, I think you'll be kind of happy with the results. All right, anyway, thank you much. Just kind of, this is like a really short video. It's not an hour long or anything, so... I was hoping to fill it with words of wisdom and, and interesting stuff, but this is about all I got. So I guess I'll see you all later. Thanks a lot. Bye.